Good morning, folks. It's January 26, 2024. I'm in the Baker barn. I'm getting rigged up to go crappie fishing today. I'm uh, all bundled up. I got about four layers of clothes on before I even get my coat and my bibs on because it's cold out there. It's in the mid 30s. It's supposed to warm up a little bit today, maybe into the low 40s. It's supposed to be light wind. So, uh, we're going to get out there and, and see if we can catch a few crappie. I'm going to go down below Truman Dam on the very upper end of Lake of the Ozarks and I'm going to spider rig today. I love spider rigging, I just don't do enough of it, but uh, I'm going to give it a try today. I'm only going to run four rods uh, that hopefully will be plenty if I can get into some fish. You know, spider rigging is a great technique year round but I especially like to spider rig in the, in the bitter cold of winter when those fish get all grouped up in big schools and you can just kind of sit on them. I'm gonna be uh, using straight minnows today. Uh, I've got my 16 foot BNM BGJP uh, uh, rods. I love those rods for spider rigging. I'm gonna be using Caps and Coleman double minnow rigs. Uh, these are rigs that are set up uh, with two hooks. That's why they call them double minnow rigs, obviously. It's got a half inch weight is what I'm using today, just a half inch. I'm gonna start out with that and see if the fish are really deep, which they may be, and I need to move a little faster. I may go to a little heavier weight, but I'm hoping I can just kind of sit on groups of fish uh, and this half ounce weight will be plenty. I tie my own Caps and Coleman style rigs. There will be a video at the end of this video uh, that I did showing you how I tie those. If you don't want to tie them yourself, you can buy uh, pre-tied Caps and Coleman rigs in various weight sizes uh, straight from uh, B&M. Uh, you can get those from B&M. You can order those from Grizzly Jig Company. The uh, reels I'm using are uh, B&M Pro 100 reels. On the reel, I've got 10 pound high vis K9 line. Uh, I tie my caps and Coleman rigs. The, the leader material, I use eight pound uh, clear K9 fluorocarbon. The caps and Coleman uh, pre-tied rigs come with a number two bronze hook. When I'm tying them, I use a number two Mustad uh, dark hook. Uh, both are equally fine. The rod holders I'm using are Parati uh, single pole rod holders. I've got four of them rigged up because that's all I'm gonna run today are four rods. I've had these rod holders, I don't know, eight, 10 years. They're the best rod holders that have ever been made in my opinion. Uh, I love them. Unfortunately, I don't think they make them anymore. A lot of people ask me about them. What kind are they? Where can I get them? I don't think you can buy them anymore. Uh, and so with that said, if anybody out there has got a set of them and they want to get rid of them, send me a message. I might take them off your hands. I think that uh, pretty well covers my gear setup. All of this uh, gear, the rods, uh, the reels, the, the uh, like I say, the Caps and Coleman pre-tied rigs, the line, all that you can get at Grizzly Jig. Just go to grizzlyjig.com. Uh, it's an awesome store. I mean, they have everything you can imagine when it comes to crappie fishing. They've got a lot of catfishing stuff, a lot of other fishing stuff. And speaking of Grizzly Jig, next weekend, uh, I think February 1 through 4, Thursday through Sunday, Grizzly Jig is having its annual show. Uh, it's something to behold. I mean, there are a lot of pros that come in, a lot of uh, uh, manufacturers come in. Uh, it, it's a great show, a lot of speakers. I think Charlie Bunning and I are gonna do a seminar Friday morning sometime. But uh, there are a lot of good speakers there, a lot of people. Uh, you, you can meet a lot of folks you see uh, on the crappie trails. I'll be there. I plan to get there sometime late Thursday afternoon, but I'll be there all day Friday and until about noon on Saturday. So if you can, 
you ought to come down to Carothersville, Missouri, down in the boot hill of Missouri, God's country. I grew up about 25 miles from there in Kennett. So I always loved to get back down there, loved to go to that show. Come up, if you're there, come up, introduce yourself to me. I love to meet the people that watch my videos. And uh, with that said, I'm going to try to do something different today that I've never done. If I can catch some crappie, I'm going to try to do a, a catch, clean, and cook video. Um, I'll show you my cleaning station I've built here in the Baker Barn. I'll show you how I fillet crappie. And then uh, my wife's gone, so I'm going to fry up some crappie tonight just for myself and uh, have a nice dinner. So let's go see if we can catch some crappie. Stay with me. Turn my paddles around, I've got to have my paddles. All right. Let's see if we can find some crappie. I may be wrong, but I expect these fish to be down close to 20 feet deep. We just dropped off into 20 feet of water. There's some fish down there. I don't know what they are. See them on the side scan too. I don't know if those are crappie. We'll go on out toward the mouth of this channel. Take a look. There's a lot of fish out here. Probably ought to just put the poles down and take off. It looks like they're everywhere. Some fish over there throwing a shadow clear out there. Some fish down there. See them here. A lot of shadows out here. I'm starting to see a lot of big fish down there. Might ought to be catfishing. There is zero wind. I think I'm just going to put the poles down and start fishing. Look like more crappie back where we started than out here. Bigger fish out here. I think I'll just turn around, put the poles down. Work my way back in, work my way back out. Let's see what happens. There we go. There we go. That one was down about 16 feet. Yeah, there we go. That's the first one of the morning. We just got set up, folks. Oh, white crappie, nice one. We've got some right down toward the bottom. I'm in 30 feet of water, and I've got some up higher in the water column, about 16 feet, so we'll see where they want it. Like I said earlier, I'm gonna keep some fish today. Maybe fry some up tonight. There's one for the old frying pan. It's 
Water's cold, folks. It's, uh, well, I've lost my temperature on here. It's, uh, there it is, 34 degrees, just over 34 degrees. It's cold. I'll just leave those on there. They didn't even get my mana. They're just kind of scattered out here, folks. Not really all congregated up, at least out here. Now, where I started in, in further in, I think they may be. There's a fish, but I don't think that's a crappie. No, not a crappie at all. I'm afraid that might be an old gar. Come on now, don't let go of it if you're a gar. If it's a catfish, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not catfishing today. Hit the old spot lock. It's gonna be a mess. 16 foot pole. All right, I got a hold of the line now. It ought to break off. Let's see what it is. That one's deep down there toward the bottom. Come on, buddy. Spit it out. Oh, yeah, it's huge gar. Big old gar. Not what I want. I mean, that's there you go. Finally broke me off. That's a record class gar there. <laughs> All right, I got some pre tied rigs. Let me get them out. All right. I'm uh, re tied. I've got some pre tied rigs with one ounce weights on them. As I break these off, if I do break any more, there's fish right there. I'm going to put one ounce weights on them because I'm fishing so deep. All right. Let's keep moving on back up in here where I think the crappie are. Get out of the gar hole. A one ounce weight when you're fishing that deep will stay down better. You get all that drag of that water from it being way down there. A little bit of movement will cause that to rise up. But with a one ounce weight, it'll stay down closer to the depth you want. Boy, there looks like a bunch of crappie there. Just kind of slow her down and just sit right in here. Better check my bait. I've been sitting there tying, not paying attention to my rods. Oh, I think I got a fish there. Yep, I got a fish there. What is it? What is it? If it's a crappie, it feels pretty good. Oh, it is. It's a nice crappie. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. That's a good old good one. All righty. That one's down there a ways. I'll take that. Yes, sir. Number two. We'll just sit out here like this all day if we have to. Catching those, those are nice. Those would be good eaters. We got little bitty minnows. This cold water, usually a smaller bait's better. That was on one of those that was a little higher in the water column. So put my power pole on it, or my uh, put my. Garmin on it, so I know exactly how deep it is. See that there? I'm gonna run that about 20 feet deep. All right. Let's see. I was checking my baits, right? All right I got baits there. All right. Let's get on in here. Oh, oh! I had a hit. Ed gummit. Felt it. I keep my hands on my rod tips. These B and M rods are so sensitive. You get a bite, man, it'll come right up that rod and you can feel it right in the handle. Oh. 
Look at that. Must have been a gar broke off the bottom hook. I'm just going to run one hook for right now. Just don't feel like changing it. Well, it looks like there's a lot of crappie on the screen there. This will be kind of like a Kentucky rig. Have to wait on the bottom. I'll just let that weight go all the way to the bottom and then. Let that go. I'll tell you folks, I got this new power pole move trolling motor. And I, it is so quiet, I can't, I can't even tell it's running. When I've got it, especially I've got it on these real slow speed. I've only got it set on three. 20 is the top speed. Now I've got it on three. And it is so smooth and so quiet, I can't tell it's running. I keep having to look down at the light and make sure the light's on when I think I'm giving it gas. Just barely moving. I'm going about 0 0.2, 0 0.3. A lot of gar in here, too. You can see them on the screen. Mm. Had one hit that. These little blacks are up real high in the water column. I can already tell that. But they need to get some more size to them. Oh, there we go. That one will keep. That's a little better black right there. All right. That's a little better black crappie there. Hook on up, bottom hook. Oh, come out. All right. Yeah, that'll go on the stringer. Might just have to weed through them. Those fish are cold. Fish was up high. I just have to be patient in here. Something I'm not very good at, I have to admit. I think we're going to motor squad. I can't tell the lights on. We're moving. <laughs> the bottom. That one might be a little better. Oh yeah, that's a keeper. <laughs> Come back here, baby. There we go. There we go. That one will go on the stringer. Yep. Boy, they're cold. They're on the bottom. It's cold, folks. I don't know if it's just soaking in. I can't believe it's getting colder temperature-wise, but it sure feels colder. My hands are cold. I don't want to put them on the rod holders. A lot of fish out there, look at that. A lot of fish out here. We finally found them in big groups, but I just don't think they're very big. And that looks like some better fish up high out there, 25 to 45 feet. But it's been those little black crappie that haven't been very big. Been slow this morning, folks, I'll tell you. They need to get busy, warm me up. Got one nibbling here, got one nibbling there. There, I got that one. Oh, they're light biters, I'll tell you. Oh well, yeah, that'll keep, that'll keep. No monster, but she's a keeper, and she's cold. Boy, they're full, eating lots of shad. Get right over here on the edge of the iceberg. 
Water's cold, I'm telling you, 34.42 degrees. Still got some ice on it. We've been completely iced up, folks, last week or so, week and a half. Lake the Ozarks, Truman, very little water open. There's one, there's one. Yeah, oh, there's two. <laughs> Look at there, finally got two at a time. That's what I'm talking about. They're both keepers, too. This top one's a nice one. Yeah, all right. That's more like it, right next to the iceberg. Put that one down there. Yes, sir. I'm sure it is, but I'm going to check it. Just get my old ruler out oh yeah that's almost 10 inches almost 10 inches maybe they're gonna start to bite here in a minute that's a nice little black crappie right there yeah be a good eating fish. All right, we're starting to get a mess. Now that one was set, I think, about 10 feet deep, so they're kind of all over. I like to catch them two at a time. Catching them two at a time, that's what we want. Come on, come on. I'll get out of here and go to the house and show you how I clean my fish and get ready to cook some. Get out of this cold. All right, come on, fish. You gotta bite me. I don't mean that in a mean-spirited way, but bite me, if you know what I mean. Come on now, there's a lot of fish down there on the bottom. I tell you, they're spooky. They're running from me. In all seriousness, this water's pretty clear and they're pretty spooky. And this, there's no wind, dead calm. Here we go. Oh, come on. Come on took it down. Well, he's menacing That's not very good. I think they're about half dead. Like me. There's a lot of fish out here, folks. They're just not biting very well and a lot of little fish. A few good ones mixed in with them, but Pretty slow going. There's a fish. There's a fish. I'm sitting here messing around. Just got my gar off. Oh, yeah, that's a keeper. That's a keeper. All right. Old white crappie. That'll go in the box. We'll have to re-rig that one. Another gar. Old gar working on me today, folks. All right, my bait's right there. My bait's right there. See if any of these little shallow fish will bite. Pretty little blacks. Yep, there's one. By golly, that little black might be a keeper. I don't know. I 
Oh yeah. That fish is nine and a half. Monster. Just a monster. I guess I can just keep fishing real shallow for these little blacks. Hope some of them are nine inches. All right, let's see if we can find us another little school of blacks up high. This water temperature's 34 degrees and these fish are three feet deep. All right, there's a little patch right there. Resorted to trying to catch a little black crappie. All right, there's my bait on that rod there. There's fish. See if we can get one of them little suckers to bite it. Oh, he hit it. <laughs> he hit it. Minnow stealer. All right. Got any more around here anywhere? There's some. There's some. There's a little pot of them. Water's clear. They're shallow. You can't just rush right in on them. So they're what? Six to ten feet deep? All right. Let's just see if we can silently move in on them. Minnows are getting nervous. There's one. There's one. That's one of those little blacks. That one ain't too bad there. Not too bad. It'll sure go on the stringer, I'll tell you that. Yeah. All right, it's a keeper. Oh my gosh, yes, it's almost 10 inches. <laughs> Boy, we're fishing for some little ones today. They'll be good eaters tonight. All right. I think we figured out a little something about how to catch these little fish. These little black fish. Just hunt them down. Fish shallow. Put a minnow in them. That simple. All right, let's see if we can scope us another little bunch. Pull the power poles up till we find what we want, and then we'll slow down. There we go. There we go. Coming in hot. Power poles down. That'll slow us down. Almost like putting on the brakes. All right, we're kind of, kind of there. Come on, little fish. <laughs> it's what we're fishing for. Now I see those down there below them, and I think, well, I ought to be having one down there. And I should, but I'm not. He's running off with it. He was running off with it. Okay, what we got? What we got? We got any fish around here? Yeah, right there. Almost where my bait is. See my bait in there? That's my bait. There's a little bitty one, a little bitty one. That's what I'm fishing for. That's why I catch them. You can tell that on the screen, but every now and then a bigger one just kind of pops out of that little group. But they're few and far between. They're mostly like that one right there. It's like they got to just sit and look at them for a while and think about it. See, now this one over here is getting ready to bite. He's got it. He's running with it. Yep. 
took him a while to think about it. That's a keeper. That's a keeper. You get those minnows in there, you'd think they'd just annihilate them, but they don't. They just sit there and sit there, and then finally, one of them will eat one. There's a bunch of fish right around here in this area, but they're all alike for the most part. All right, come on. Just gonna let them sit in there and entice you. You gotta just let them take it, these little bitty ones, they nibble on it. There he is, there he is. That's a keeper, that's a keeper. That one was deeper there. Come here, baby. Come here, baby. Put a minute on that when I come back. Boy, they're monsters. They're spread out all over. Some right on the surface, and then some will hit down a little deeper. And I've caught some dead on the bottom. Hadn't been real hot and heavy anywhere. This is fun though, even though it's been slow, it's fun. Ooh, look at them out there. There's one. There's one. That's a keeper. That is a keeper. There again was on that one that's about 10 feet deep. Better make sure. Oh yeah, almost nine and three quarters. Woohoo! All right, let's move on up here. I see, I spy some ahead of us up here. How about you? You see them? Folks, that's what a big school of little crappie look like. Just in case you're wondering. I mean, I'm getting in them. There's no wind today, hardly. Slight breeze. I'm just getting in them and then just sitting. And you just gotta wait them out. I ought to get bit. There we go, there we go. Gotta wait them out. I won't keep. Come on. Come on, I got one over here thinking about it. I'm gonna let him eat it. Got one here thinking about it. Got one out there thinking about it. Got a lot of scholars, a lot of thinkers, no eaters. Okay. You better get it, it's leaving you. There he got it, oh no. <laughs> he yanked on it, he's getting away from him, sitting there looking at it. Ought to be corking them. This would be a great time to be throwing a cork in the middle of those. But I'm spider rigging. I like the spider rig. You might catch them on a jerk bait too, but these fish are pretty small. There, now I got two. All right. Folks, I only need one to finish out a limit, so it's a good way to do it, one in each hand. I want to take the big one, what do you think? <laughs> I say big one, bigger one. 
That's a limit. That's a limit. Yep, that's the last hook on the old stringer. So, gotta get one off here, don't I? No, that's one I just he come off or is that the one I had it on? I think that one came off. Good. Because I'm quitting. Okay, folks. That's going to do it for me. We got a limit. They're not monsters, but they're not bad. They'll sure taste good, I'll tell you that. Let's go to the house where it's warm. We're going to get inside. We're going to clean these babies up. And we're going to cook a few of them tonight. Stay with me. Okay, folks, welcome to the Baker Barn and my cleaning station. Um, I'll give you a little uh, tour of the cleaning station before we get to cleaning fish. It's something I just made uh, back in my home in Columbia and brought up here. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's got two double sinks. Uh, on the left side of each of these sinks, I've just cut out a hole uh, so there's no drain. And, and what I've done then is put a bucket under each side, and that's so I can throw my fish scraps in there and then take them down to the lake and dump them. This sink uh, is plumb for a drain. Dump my fish in there. Like I say, same thing here. This one has a drain in it too, and what I've done is put a PVC pipe that stands up in there so that I can throw my fillets in here and it washes them. I took my uh, sprayer hose and I've got it uh, locked down with a rubber band so that it sprays a circle of water and it drains out the top of this. So uh, that's basically the deal. And like I say, I've got another bucket down there. Uh, that's pretty much it. I uh, put some uh, cutting board material up for a backsplash so it's easily wiped off and I did the same thing down below. But that's it. So I got my fish out for, of the boat, of course, and I dumped them in here. I'll show you the knife I have settled on. I have used about every fillet knife known to man over the years and this is the best one I have ever found. I mean, I love this thing. It's Rapala R12 HD. Comes in a nice case. Uh, they give you two, two blades with it, two batteries, and a battery charger. I bought this blade, this uh, more narrow one, which I like for cleaning crappie, uh, but it's, it's great. And I don't know how many fish you can clean before you run out of battery, because I've never run out of battery, and we've cleaned a lot of fish with it at one time. But at any rate, that's the deal. So this is my knife. Um, so I've got three cutting boards uh, made for this thing. So I can do a cutting station here, a cutting station down there if I want, and one down here on the end. All I need is one today, of course. So I'm going to take one of these and just put it right here. I have a lip here on the edge of my uh, sink to keep the water in, and it's just a little bit lower than my cutting board so that I can uh, get down there and not hit the edge. But uh, that's the deal. So, see if you can see this. I just take my fish, go right behind the gills, straight down, concentrate more on the backbone than the belly, and just go straight down, flip it over, Right down through there. And there you have it. I got a fillet. Turn it over. Do the exact same thing. Again, I focus more on the top of the fish than the bottom because that's where most of the good meat is. I want to make sure I'm getting that backbone right down on the back there. Same thing. Just flip that over, 
Come right down there on the tail. Right across. Take my scrap. Right down the old hole into the bucket. And then if I'm by myself, I don't have somebody like Charlie cutting the rib cage out. I just take my fillet knife. Cut a V just like that. Throw the ribs away. Throw the fillet there in the sink. As you can see, it swirls it around, kind of cleans them up good while I'm cleaning all my fish. Do the same thing here. Cut right down that rib bone. Right straight across there. There's a little bit of fat on the bottom of each of these fillets. You want to make sure you peel off that fat on the bottom. A lot of times there will be a strip of fat right on the top of the fillet. Get that off too. But throw that in there. Okay, I'll do another one. Straight down. Turn the knife right down that backbone. Cut it right off, flip that up. Same way this side. Kind of made a mess of that one. Right down there. Well, these are nice big fat black crappie. I'll cut me several fillets and pile them up there. come back and cut that rib out of there. Just that easy. The last one. Doesn't take very long, folks, I tell you. You have a good knife, good place to do it. Doesn't take very long. Okay, I got a bunch of them just piled up there now. Some of these pretty small. Not much belly meat on the small ones. Oh. That's it. Threw that in the wrong hole. All right, that's all of them. So what I usually do, I'll just leave these fillets in the sink here for a while. Just let them swirl around. It really cleans them up good, gets all the blood out of them, gets rid of some of that little fat that's attached to them. And then I'll come back and uh, kind of give them a final cleaning and then bag them. Uh, I'm going to let them soak for a while while I clean up the fish cleaning station. Then I'll come back and I'll show you how I bag them and freeze them. Stay with me. Okay, I got the table 
cleaned up pretty good. I just come now and I take these uh, fillets and I just kind of go over them, make sure there isn't any fat on them. Make sure I've got all the ribs and all that. Feel that little piece of fat off of there on the bottom. Like that one right there on that little belly piece. Just got my hose locked down with the rubber band. All right. Clean that up and give them one final little spray there. All right, I'll show you what I do. I put them in quart bags. Uh, 15 fillets is about perfect for my wife and I. So I put 15 to a quart bag. I take the bag, I put the date on it. I put the number of fillets in the bag, although it's usually always 15. If I've got a gallon bag, then I'll, I'll put uh, however many I'm putting in that. And so I'll just, uh, we'll take 15 fillets. All right. So I got 15 fillets in that bag. Now I run water in it till she can't take any more water. Make sure it's full of water so there's not any air in there. And that's it. There's my bag of fillets. I'll just take that, put that in the freezer. Freezes them in there real good, keeps them from uh, getting burned. And that's it. That's how I clean them, how I bag them. I'll put that in the freezer. These other 15, I'm going to put in the grease. I'll show you how I do that too. Stay with me. Okay, I'm going to show you. The grease is getting hot out there, so I'll show you how I, I do my fish. Uh, when I do a fish fry, crappie especially. Um, I use Andy's fish breading, just the plain yellow uh, breading, uh, no seasoning, it's just the plain. I take uh, just a gallon bag. I use a little Paul Prudhomme Magic uh, Seasoning Blackened Redfish Magic. That's what it's called. See if you can see that there. I put that in with my Andes, a little salt and pepper, and that's it. The key, I think, is you got to get these fillets good and dry before you put them in the bag. So um, I've got them on paper towels in the bottom of that pan. I'm going to just make sure they're good and dry. If you put them in the bag and they're real wet, that, that breading will just uh, clump up. So uh, just, just get them good and dry. I mean, they don't have to be so dry you put a hair dryer on them or anything like that. But just get the water off of them. And uh, so then I just take my gallon bag. I'm only cooking 15 fillets. Uh, which is plenty for one person. My wife's not here, so she'll just miss out. But I'm going to go ahead and cook 15 anyway. I like them cold for breakfast. Just pour in a little Andy's in the sack. Doesn't take all that much for just 15 fillets. Then I'll just kind of salt and pepper it. I don't kill it, but I don't measure it, but just by feel, put a little salt in there. I'm a salt fanatic. I'm surprised it hadn't killed me. 
Uh, same way with the pepper, just put some pepper in there. And then I get my blackened redfish magic. And I'll just pour some of that in there too. I don't measure it. Just adds a little flavor to it. Don't have to have a whole lot. I like the taste of this stuff. That'll be plenty. Just zip that up. Shake her all up real good. Mix it up. I don't use any of those fancy breading bowls, although I've got one. But All right. And so I'm going to go check my grease. I want to wait till right before it's time to put them in the grease. And then I'll just put all the fillets in there, shake them up real good. I don't like them to soak in that breading until it's about time to put them in the grease. So hang on. I'm going to go check the temperature. This is my fish cleaning station out here. I uh, got my little barbecue grill and uh, I got my Cajun fryer. I love this fish fryer. I think this is the four gallon. Yeah, it's the four gallon size. It's perfect for me. Um, got that grease going in there. I wait till it's a good 350, between 350 and 375, and she'll be ready. So we got a little bit of time. Okay, she's getting close out there. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna put my fish in the batter. Just drop them in there. Just mix them up, get that breading all over them. That's plenty of breading for 15 fillets. Just shake them up real good. Get them all breaded up good. All right, I'm gonna take this camera and I'm gonna go outside. Okay, she's at uh, 350. I'm going to cook me some uh, crinkle cut fries with my fish. I love crinkle cut fries. All right, so I'm just going to take them, put all 15 of them in one side. Kind of shake that breading off of them as you put them in there the extra. I cook my fish for exactly four minutes. Some people only cook them for three, some people a little longer. Four minutes is how I like them. All right, so I got all the fish out of there. I'm gonna pour me in some crinkle cuts. That grease is good and hot. She'll cool off. I'm gonna set my timer for four minutes. Drop that right down in there. Oh yeah. Four minutes. The fry is probably gonna take a little bit longer. They, I may cook them about uh, seven minutes or so. When they start to float, they're done. I'll throw that batter away. I don't ever save it after I've had fish in it. Let them cook just a little bit, get kind of firmed up. I don't want to knock the breading off by stirring them around, but you kind of shake them in that basket. I always get a slotted spoon, I don't know why, and after they've cooked just a little bit, just kind of stir them a little bit, make sure they don't stick together. If we're cooking a whole bunch of fish, and it's going to take several batches, what we do is we turn the oven on and set it on 200 degrees. It just kind of keeps it warm. We put our fish in these uh, aluminum foil 
baskets and you can keep the uh, uh, napkin in there with them, the paper towel, and just stick them in the oven in between batches and that keeps them good and warm while you're, while you're finishing up the rest of your food. Then you can take them all out at once, eat up. I didn't eat lunch today. Man, these are going to be good, I'm telling you. I took a sandwich with me. You know what kind, but I just never got around to eating it. Didn't want to ruin my appetite. I knew I was going to be cooking fish when I came in. All right, that's my timer. I'm going to set it for two more minutes just to keep the fries in there, but that's four minutes. I'm going to take the, take the fish out and let them drain a little bit. Those fries are close, I'll tell you. They're floating. may not take two minutes. Oh boy, doesn't that look good. Dump those in the pan. A little paper towel there on the bottom. Let them drain a little bit. Woo-wee! All right, those fries are floating. I think they're done. I'm gonna go ahead and take them out too. I'm gonna kill that timer. I don't think it's gonna take that long. All right. Fried crappie and crinkle cut fries. Who could ask for more? There you go. All right, I'm gonna turn the grease off, go in the house, I'll see you in there. All right, folks, it's time to eat. I'm here by myself, so I'm just going to use my fingers. Mm -mm -mm. Put me some fish in there. Get me some good old French fries. Ooh -wee. Here we go. Got me a good cold drink. Here I go, reaching for the salt before I even taste it. Little ketchup. All right, all right, all right. Let's see. Dip my fish in a little ketchup. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. I'm telling you, that's delicious. Little fish, little drink, and look at here. What could be better? Mike Baker videos on the television. Boy, that's a good one. All right. That's it, folks. Catch, clean, and cook. I've had a fun day. Didn't catch any big fish, pretty small fish, but got a limit. Uh, got to do this video I've been wanting to do for a long time. I really appreciate you being with me. I'm going to quit talking because I'm going to get to eat. Hit that subscribe button, will you? Oh, and look at the end here. This way, I think. Uh, I'll put two more videos up there. I'll put one video on how I tie my spider rigs and probably put another spider rig video up there. So if you like this one, maybe you'll like those. Thanks for being with me.